So, Doc, people listen to us for nonsense, and we give it to them in spades. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. Some would even say, on our best days, malarkey. Braves, defending champs. Boy, it sure would be a shame if there was no season next year and we were just still the defending champs. Also, this guy that got hit, how old is he? Uh, 46. What a loser, just sissy man. You just got punched in the face by a 90-year-old man? Come on, dude. I'll bet Doc is like the Sinbad of Ames, Iowa. Because people, people... I didn't realize. I thought it was just a doc thing with the corn jokes. Iowa people love corn jokes. Well, you know what they say, knee high by July, baby. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's killing in the Midwest right now. I'm sure when that hits their ears, they're like, that doc, he gets us. Doc, what do I love more than anything? That's right, an angry football team. I prefer to think of Warsaw as like a battle of who's the best saw, right? So you have like a sawzall, you have a skill saw, you have a hacksaw, handsaw. It's just a battle of saws to the death. Welcome to the Spaghetti Junction Boys podcast coming to you from beautiful Atlanta, Georgia. I am your host as always, joined here by the one, the only, Doc Jacobson. Before we get things started here, we want to thank our friends over at Manscaped. Support for the Spaghetti Junction Boys podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision-engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package is the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you, 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code SJBATLANTA at manscaped.com. If my math is correct, that's about 8 million balls. We were sent packages from Manscaped for our packages. Included in there was the one, the only Lawnmower 4.0. This trimmer is the future of grooming, features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and has a 400K LED spotlight you need for a more precise shave. If you're anything like me, you still somehow have shaving remnants from 2016 somewhere in your bathroom. Well, thanks to that waterproof technology, say goodbye to the mess on the bathroom floor. Say hello to a cleaner, fresher shave. It's time to kick. It's time to take care of yourself. So go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping with the code SJBAtlanta at manscaped.com. Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Haven't done the long read in a while. I have. Yeah, that was nice. I, I, I always, whenever you get to the end there and said, uh, right tools for the job i always think right tools for the jewels but i'm a sicko so <laughs> i mean it's it seems like a missed a missed rhyme there that would be really nice i don't know i i i don't think people are rhyming as much anymore with their with their advertisements that's true it's not the 90s anymore i uh i i was watching some channel i think it was like nickelodeon games and sports or i saw in a documentary or something it was but it was, there were some commercials from the 90s where uh, where I, I, I really felt myself longing for how happy those commercials used to be. Yeah. You know, it was just some idealistic family that no one's family is like that. And they're just like, hey, mom, thanks for making my sandwiches from school. It's like, sure, hon. Do you want one of these claws and pickles? Wow. What a treat for me in my school day. And it's just like Claus and Pickles. It's 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 just wonderful. But now people are trying to do too much when when we just want the basics back. Just give me the meat and potatoes. I don't need all this extra frou-frou, garlic and, you know, oregano and all these spices. Meat and potatoes. Give it to me. Yeah. I, I'm with you there. Speaking of meat and potatoes, uh, former New England Patriots and Tampa Bay Buccaneer quarterback Tom Brady retired yesterday, Doc. He hung it up, and it's weirdly enough gotten not a ton of coverage, and I think it's because no one believes him. It's, is, the, old, it is? it's the old fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you kind of deal, right? Or fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. You know, every, no, everyone's here seen Tom Brady cry wolf with the whole retirement thing. We're not trying to have another Brett Favre saga. Like, we're just going to see what happens. 
Yeah, it's it's interesting because uh, <laughs> I think one part of it is he retired a year ago, and mm. it didn't last terribly long. And two, this just seemed very flippant. That it was just him on the beach and was like, I woke up this morning and figured I wanted to retire. And you're like, eh, okay. Maybe if there was like a montage or you set it going into the year or something like that, people would give more credence to it. But I don't know. Maybe it's just the fact that Tom Brady has been an NFL quarterback longer in his life than he hasn't been an NFL quarterback in his life. And so we're just not used to a world without Tom Brady as an NFL quarterback, they were just like, no, that's that's not it. And he wasn't even playing poorly. Like Drew Brees, when he retired, we were like, yeah, thank God. Please, we were dying for this. When Peyton Manning retired, we were just like, yeah, your career need to be put out back and shot at this point. Tom Brady still looked good. He's, he's still fine. Yeah, if you had some semblance of an offensive line, you might actually put up more than three points in that game against Dallas. But, hey, what are you going to do? In that the whole Byron Leftwich for head coach thing last year, and I admit it, I was on that train. But they had so much offensive talent. You had Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. I mean the Julio Jones. Uh, and yet, you, you you couldn't really do much with it. And then I was seeing all these clips on social media where there would be like three receivers running to the same spot and stuff like that. I was like, oh. That that may be why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, one guy can cover three receivers. Oh, that's a, that's a really easy defensive scheme right there. He went from a hot head coaching commodity to fired one year later. Now, speaking yeah. of social media trends, the best one I saw was like it was basically the first meeting of the Panthers and the Falcons, and it's where the guy took his helmet off after scoring like the game winning touchdown. They missed a field goal. Anyways, what long story short, Panthers end up losing that game. But if the guy hadn't taken his his helmet off, they would have made the easy extra point uh, and won the game, and then they would have won the NFC South. So, I mean, can we really say Tom Brady – I'm not going to say he played bad, but did he play up to his standard? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, but also you have to think Tom Brady only played like a quarter and a half in that Week 18 game against Atlanta. And so if he – if he did play, they, they probably would have beat Atlanta. Yeah, that, that's true. That, 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 you got to take social media with a grain of salt because that thing was definitely like, well, if everything went exactly the same as it did, that one game meant the world. And I was like, well, like you said, there would have been something that changed at the end to where Brady would have fought to the end of that game. It's – um, I don't know. I, I, I find it really interesting how – this is not as big of a deal as, you know, when LeBron James retires, that's going to be, you know, a huge hullabaloo. Uh, but it is a bit more than when Ken Griffey Jr. That was previously the most perplexing retirement coverage to me. And I think it's because his career did just kind of fade because of the injuries. But Ken Griffey Jr. just retired on like a random day in July. And it was, I'll never forget this. It was on the side of ESPN.com. It wasn't their featured story. It was just in those... Like yeah, nine yeah. superfluous uh, little links to the right is like Griffey Jr. retires with whatever many home runs. It's like the dude was the shit for like a decade. <laughs> he yeah. was like '90s baseball, other than McGuire Sosa. Well, I think because everyone freaked out so hard about it last year, it's kind of like it's yelling surprise at the surprise party for the wrong person, and then the guy walks in. Right? It's exactly it just took the air out of the room last year. Yeah, and. A, the the wild thing is about last year is there are still um, – it, it really does seem like that wasn't his goodbye. That was his goodbye to Tampa. Um, and we saw later on that the plan was for the Dolphins to get Sean Payton and Tom Brady. And they ended up getting neither of them and instead got a lawsuit from Brian Flores and a couple of draft picks removed. So in one of the biggest backfires one could have. <laughs> Uh, and some that would only happen to the Dolphins and and maybe like the Lions, but uh, I I don't know where do you where do you land on if Tom Brady, let's say, you know a a ready made team features some horrendous injury uh, in the middle of the year. I don't even want to. Eh, I guess we can speculate on on a team. Let's say God forbid Jalen Hurts goes down serious injury week one next year and Howie Roseman gives Tom Brady a call and says, Hey, 
Can you come be an Eagle for a year? Do you think he does it? No, I don't think so. I, the one that always pops into my head, and I know the pundits are all talking about it, but think about what Brady did with Tampa Bay, right? I mean, they were a okay middle-of-the-pack team, and then he took them to a championship. And that that screams to me the Raiders right now. They're a little bit subpar, so it's a better, you know, take them over the mountain kind of team. I, I agree with you. I don't think – I don't even think he's really thinking he's retired. I mean, if you blow up your family like that and just – basically go through an entire divorce through the season, you're not ready to hang it up. I mean, he knows he still has it in him. He's told everyone he still has it in him. It's just he wants to go win a championship. He doesn't want to play for a half-assed, hamstrung team that can't have three wide receivers in the same defensive zone. So if he, if that's the case with him, then wouldn't he just kind of go through the free agent process um, while being non-committal and his playing future and just see what's out there for him? and see, hey, if there's a team that's close and just missing a quarterback, like, uh, I don't know, maybe you could say that's the Jets. Maybe you could say that's the Titans or the Steelers or the Commanders or one of these teams. Why Dallas. Through it? Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, after what Dak Prescott has done the past two years, he's got to be gone. I'm a known Dak truther, and, and, and I'm a known that, Dak hater. You're on that wagon as well. Um, he had the highest percentage of interceptions to pass his thrown last year, um, and now Mike McCarthy is going to be the play caller and the head coach. So what could go yeah, wrong? Just... Big things coming in Big D. In small packages. <laughs> well. We'll we'll see what what shakes out with Brady. I I, I think the Jets and the Raiders are the two best positions, but I keep hearing all this talk about Rodgers going to the Jets, which also makes sense. Yeah, the Jets have a really good roster, and you saw that by Mike White's not a world beater, but he was still able to find some semblance of success with them. Joe Flacco had a little success uh, with that team, and no one's banging down the door for either of them. No. And so Rodgers I mean, would make a lot of sense there. And you get freaking Brees Hall back too after that knee injury. I mean, they got oh, a good football here we team. Go. Yeah, that's <laughs> you're saying it because that's he's the missing, that's the missing chip right there, buddy. Out of everyone you could name there, of course you go straight to Brees Hall. What I mean, I'll, I'll turn off my background and show you the flag, buddy. Go they had They had the rookie of the year offensively and defensively on this team. And neither of those were Brees Hall. Brees Hall is a good running back, but I should have known the Cyclones were coming. <laughs> come on, come on. Cyclones come on. are always coming. And, and yeah. Rodgers brings over Lazard. we got a Cyclones team right there. There's there's a lot of quarterback shifting that's going to happen, whether it's, it's Derek Carr, uh, whether it's potentially Aaron Rodgers. We don't know whether or not that's going to happen yet. Uh, Jameis Winston, uh, Andy Dalton's a free agent, Taylor Heineke. Is a Taysom free Hill agent. to the Broncos. Yeah, I saw those memes. <laughs> Lamar Jackson is likely to get franchise tag, but if someone throws them a huge deal, who knows if if he could find himself uh, being traded? But I don't know. That's that's it's going to be fascinating to watch. And I guess maybe Brady did gauge some early interest and see, hey, there's nowhere I really want to be, and so I may as well hang it up. But. That's going to be the speculation. That's always the speculation. That's the speculation for lesser quarterbacks. You know, how often do we did we hear after uh, Philip Rivers hung it up? Hey, you know, so and so suffers an injury. Is Philip Rivers getting a call? We heard it about Big Ben. We heard about uh, all these different quarterbacks where they're just like, hey, call Favre, call Eli Manning. It's going to be all year. It's going oh, yeah. to be all year. Yeah, I mean, Colts. Colts are another team we didn't even mention. They're decent. And I mean, without freaking Matt Ryan there dying on the field every other day. The Colts are might. a retirement home. They they, they are. Yeah, they, but... The Colts lately at quarterback are the NFL's Statue of Liberty. Bring me <laughs> your tired, broken quarterbacks. Give us your Carson Wentz's and your Phillip Rivers and your Matt Ryan's. I thought you were going with the trick play route with that Statue of Liberty a la Boise State, but no, I like the way you went. I mean, good Lord. that's It's just a retirement home. Any any quarterback that they're looking for, the first thing he asks when he gets to town is their benefit package. It's like, so, uh, got a chiropractor on staff. What What's your cold tub situation looking like? 
So I don't know. Maybe maybe they will find solace in some that's that has Andy Dalton written all over it. Like they're gonna draft a quarterback high, the Colts will, but that screams we need Andy Dalton as a bridge quarterback. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be an interesting offseason. There's a lot of decent quarterbacks lighting around and a couple of high namers that we'll see what happens. So Doc, I, I hate to tell you this. I my computer is about to die and I am a good forty feet from my charger. And so okay. for, for our next topic. Yes. Yeah, that's the second quality of time. I've got to start planning better. My God. Um I could go on Iowa State basketball for a while. Well, I was going to I was going to set you up in a different direction. Oh, okay. And this is right in your wheelhouse. This is uh Chan Ho Park while uh uh pitching to Cal Ripken Jr. in the All Star game in his final All Star game, just grooving one right down the middle for you. In this past weekend's AFC and NFC championship games, uh, there was a lot of talk about conspiracy theories that the NFL is rigged. They want these matchups to happen. So the league is telling the referees what to do and so forth. And Vegas is getting involved and sponsors are getting involved. And everyone says the league is rigged. It's nothing but show business. People go into Uh, how the NFL says that they are not um, a sports league, they're an entertainment league, and saying, ha, it's proof, it's professional wrestling, it's all a charade. So while I'm going to get my charger, I'm I'm giving myself 30 seconds to a minute before I'm good to go. The floor is yours. Get get into your NFL conspiracy theories. And the words of Fox Mulder, the truth is out there. I mean, just do a little bit of research. Just just get into the thick of it. You know, look at some couple under the table deals. I mean, it, it, it has to be true. It has to be written. There's a very interesting post that just came out from Barstool. And it might, you know, be a little fan fodder. It might not be. But I'll wait to bring that up here when uh, Mr. Q gets back. But, I mean... Who doesn't love a good conspiracy theory? I mean, they're all over the place. And to have the beloved, beloved game of NFL, who always, always says, do not, you know, disgrace the name or the game, to have this really be in the forefront the last, I would say, three, four years, I mean, it's really coming to a nice fruition here. It's just the the truth is out there, as I said, to start this off, just just do a little research. If you think it's too good to be good, if you think that flag was called a little too easy, it probably was. And Mr. Q, what I was going to bring up while you were away, on Barstool Sports this week, they came out with potential Hall of Famer. I, I don't know if we'll go as far as Hall of Famer, but the, one of the most electric running backs in the late aughts, early teens, Arian Foster, came out and said, the beginning week one, of every, you know, start to the season, they would get a, they would get a complete script. You're going to get this injury this week. You're going to get this injury this week. You're going to come back and do three touchdowns here. I mean, it's crazy. It might be a little fan fodder, you know, but it piques the interest. And now you see all – it's just – if something's too good to be true, it's probably false. So I'm online. Conspiracies all day. He was clearly joking. <laughs> Was he, though? (laughs) Arian Foster's an odd dude. He's Um, hilarious. I I watched that macro. I listen to that macro dose show. It's it's pretty good. My the the thing about it is where I will concede to certain folks is that is it possible that the NFL would make it known to referees? Hey. We would like such and such to, or to, if if they if they really want you know a certain brand, certain players in certain games, that they would say, hey, you know, Cincinnati, they hold a lot. Look out for that. Those Bengals hold a ton. That they could influence it that way, or maybe they tell the general manager because the general managers of teams, uh, as we learned when we had David Sampson on, former president of the Miami Marlins. Uh, then the Florida Marlins told us general managers aren't just player movement, coach movement. There's a lot that goes into it. Maybe they tell a general manager, hey, we'd sure like for that uh, 
that field, the grass to be a bit longer. So maybe pass that down to not trim the grass as much. I maybe those things. But as I feel with all other conspiracy theories, uh, whether people have them about you know the news media or they have them over um, you know so so and so's murder. The amount of cover-up that would have to happen with no one coming clean about what actually happened makes these kind of things impossible. Because just imagine if, if the NFL told... Imagine the NFL tells Jerry Damn Jones, you're going to lose this game. You see Jerry Jones buying into that? No, Jerry Jones is going to say, bleep this and go and do whatever the hell he wants. And you have so many people, like they call it the not for long league. So you have so many people involved who play in a preseason game, a handful of regular season games, who are in the league for two, three years uh, and so forth. So many people get angry at the NFL. You see uh, numerous lawsuits, whether it was uh, on Colin Kaepernick's behalf or it was Brian Flores or um, you know the player safety uh, lawsuits. That's someone, somewhere would have that wash up and you may say oh well maybe it did wash up and then someone uh someone got axed not no one's really getting mysteriously axed out there that uh that would have threatened so it, it would have come out by now you ever uh, signed a non-disclosure you, agreement nda clause ever heard of that you think the nfl has given ndas to folks with brain damage and saying, oh, that should cover it? Yep. <laughs> there's there's all these stories about NFL players who are living in trailers or ended up homeless or, you know, are now working at Best Buy and so forth that I, I think they'd be like, hey, you know what? They may sue me, but the book and movie deals I'd get from this makes it worth it. But if you're a crazy person or you're homeless or you're in that position in life, how much credibility are they going to give to you? The media is going to strike you down. The NFL has the media working for them. The NFL has uh, Roger Goodell working for them. And I'm also on the line that Roger Goodell might just be a lizard person that is there to do bad, buy. bad things. I don't for. Um, and, and also, uh, forgive me, but the commissioner before him, very lizard-esque as well. Uh, Paul Tagliabue. Paul Tagliabue. Uh, name Rodney is a lizard. Tell, you gotta have a lizard tongue to say that name correctly. Tagliabue. It still sits in my head uh, that during the 2020 NFL draft, when we were in Roger Goodell's basement, and he says, this is my comfy chair. This is my chair that I watch NFL football on. I can't get that shit out of my head. That, like, it's it's the first and last thing I talk to my therapist about every time I see her is is Roger Goodell's comfy chair. And she keeps trying to get me to move on, but I just I can't. Is it worth to go through all that effort and disgrace that's going to be your name dragged through the mud for a couple of shingles when you know you're going to get sued for all the money and the rights and everything? You're not going to get any of that money. Well, you're you're also saying on the credibility piece that there's no one you could go to. Have you seen our fucking society these days? <laughs> Anyone can say. Oh, hey, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> listeners! I didn't want to go there. Listeners, I did not. It's not at you. <laughs> there's, there's someone from an alternative sports media company who's pushing all of his followers to think that Demar Hamlin died, and this is a lookalike, and used a snowy buffalo sweet as like, see, see, we don't know if it's him. <laughs> and there's all these brain dead morons on Twitter just like. Yeah, I mean, we're just asking questions here. We're just, and that's that is the worst retort <laughs> that anyone gives back when someone says something crazy as shit, and then someone else is like, "Well, that's crazy." They're just like, "No, I'm just asking questions. I'm just asking questions that have to be answered." Like, no, they don't have to be answered. Jamar Hamlin's not dead, replaced by a copy. I feel very confident in saying that as someone who's never met Jamar Hamlin. Yeah, yeah, that that one's a bit far out there. And then, and then all the people who'd have to be involved. You have fifty-two teammates who are supposed to not mourn their dead teammate. All these coaches that are in on it. The uh, they, they'd be saying he. They would be saying he died in the ICU, and they brought in a lookalike. They wouldn't. 
He's not with the team. He didn't die on. Well, he might have died on it. I, I don't want to get into that. Oh no, you're convincing us. It's up to the wheels are turning. Well, no, no, no. But that also plays against what we were just talking about with the NFLs. Uh, or maybe it doesn't. Maybe they couldn't have the Bills win because of all that trauma and all the stuff of player safety and shit. Maybe that's why they lost to the Bengals. Oh. Because they were mourning? Well, no, because like I was just thinking, like, there was all that hype and play up around, you know, Team of Destiny with the Bills and, you know, doing it for DeMar and all that, which was cool. But the NFL couldn't have them win a championship because then you got all these talks about player safeties coming back up, concussion protocols, the junior say outs of the world. Like, you can't have that resurface for the NFL. I'll tell you what, if the NFL was rigged, the Arizona Cardinals never would have made it to a Super Bowl. Why? Do you want to watch the Arizona Cardinals in the Super Bowl? Uh, <laughs> baseball. The Rockies made the World Series. If professional sports were rigged, the Rockies would never make it. In the NHL, the Tampa Bay Lightning wouldn't have won multiple Stanley Cups. In college basketball, guess who's not making the Final Four twice in a row? Butler. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I think Phoenix is a bigger market than, like, St. Louis. So market-wise, I think it would be a better play. I, I, granted, to watch the actual gameplay, yeah, I'd rather watch the Rams than the Cardinals. But market-wise, and the only things the NFL gives about gives a damn about is money and TV views. I've I've long said that uh, we we all root for the underdog when they get there. We all are excited about the Kansas City Royals winning the AL Central. And we all want to root against the New York Yankees. But when the shit comes down to it and you say, what are you more interested in if I could give you a World Series today? Royals and Mets or Dodgers, Yankees? Everyone outside of Mets fans and Royals fans would say, give me Dodgers, Yankees. And it's the same across everything. What did we love in the Final Four last year? It was Duke and it was UNC playing in the final four. Now, if you want to go for rigged, that that would be a good that thing. Was, yeah, that was, um, yeah. <laughs> clearly, clearly rigged. But that, that's, that's something that I always love to do uh, when the playoffs first start in any sport, is think to myself, what would the league absolutely hate? Like, could you imagine if this year it was two weeks of talk leading up to the Super Bowl between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Seattle Seahawks, Roger Goodell would have just, he would have pulled a Dan Snyder and gone out to sea and just not answered his phone. He said, do not reach me right now. I'm out on the water. I'm part lizard. This is very dangerous for me. I'm not going to be back till after the Super Bowl. I'm not one of those aquatic lizards. Yeah. Very, very landlocked lizard. <laughs> like in, in the NBA, imagine Adam Silver having to try to hype up Kings Pacers. Like, oh, God. No, <laughs> please, not this. I thought you were going to go with the Spurs, although they did have that fantastic run with Tim Duncan. But, I mean, they have been an ass basketball team lately. Yeah, the, the Spurs were – I believe they won five championships over the course of, um, of Greg Pop- Popovich's tenure. And they've been boring for every single damn one of them. Yeah. They have never been an exciting team because you're right. Uh, The St. Louis Rams, the greatest show on turf, was fascinating. And you had the storylines like Kurt Warner from Northern Iowa who was stocking grocery shelves. But you had the fairway at the fairway, Larry. Wait, okay. It was at a fairway? Yeah. Okay. I have a bone to pick with. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I had a bone to pick with Safeway. Safeway. Safeway is East Coast. None of those out West. I saw a grocery store map that someone. Uh, said the most popular grocery store in every state and measured it by foot traffic. And Florida was Safeway, and I've never heard of that shit in my life. (laughs) Meanwhile, the grocery store God is based in Florida. Are you kidding me? It is public, dude. I think it was that one uh, Twitter guy that just makes those memes of the maps. Oh, big game finger! I think it was just him. I think it was just him just getting at you. He did a troll account. Just knew you'd see it. 
Just I, you gotta get it. Every time. So much. And I know he I don't know what he looks like. I don't know where he's from. I don't know anything about him, but I hate his stupid list. They're the dumbest shit on the planet. It's just like head coaches with the most swag. And not not only are they typically dumb like that, but there's always just a glaring omission that he just does to and Barstool has now copied this where they do it just to stoke engagement, which I had someone recommend to us to do, um, someone who does social media for a living. And I said, I, I would rather die than put out one of those. Where I like the actual list, I like the maps, but if you're going to tell me we put out a list that says best college football programs of all time and Alabama's 46th, no, fuck off. I'm not doing that. And they're dumb, and I hate Big Game Boomer. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, we will not be doing that because I did take the time to do dogs of each state where you mat, you blank out the state and you put the picture in there. That took me three days. I was just, I'm not doing that. We're not doing that. That was a wrong time to be drinking water. Um, no, but that 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 Georgia was Kroger, which I was like, yeah, that's probably right. I mean, it's Kroger Publix, but I'm guessing Kroger. Um, but that that shit with Florida really, that really unnerved me. Uh, I bet Win Dixie and Albertsons have more traffic than damn Safeway. I've never heard of Safeway. Safeway was what I grew up with in DC area. So I'm, Safeway and Giant were the two mega players up there. How dare they disrespect Publix like that? I just they just knew how to troll you, buddy. They knew right right where to get you, right in the nads. I I take a lot of pride in not falling victim to a lot of the things that gas people up these days that politicians put in front of people to really get them fighting amongst each other. I stay out of the fray in that stuff. And I, I'm proud of myself for that. And a lot of the societal things that people get bent out of shape for or show their biases on. But I feel like I'm able to... I just looked up how many Safeways are there in Florida, and Google literally said there are no Safeways in Florida. Are you kidding me? I knew it. It literally says fact: there are no Safeways in the state of Florida. Oh my! It goes deeper than we thought. Oh. Further, any Safeways that were there at the 2018 were bought by Publix. <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. Most popular grocery store in each state. Stupid Safeway. And it also shows that as Alabama, now that I'm looking at it again. And, again, I've never seen, I've never seen one of these places ever, much less in Florida or Alabama. Uh, Iowa's high V, by the way. That that checks out. Can confirm. Uh, DC is giant. Virginia's food lion. Yeah, down in Southern Virginia, a lot of food lions down there. Uh, California's Trader Joe's, those assholes. But uh, what I was saying, that whole food. I don't get. <laughs> I don't get lumped into all those those things. But what I do, that doesn't mean I don't get unjustifiably angry because it's things like Big Game Boomer that just stick with me to such an nth degree. Go ahead, go ahead. Just, just out this person. Who put this out there? They need to be, they need to be tormented. That is, that is despicable to put Safeway in a state that has zero Safeways. Stats Panda. Oh, I'm sorry. The fact that you get so upset by a list made by an account called Stats Panda is so funny to me. <laughs> the source is wisevoter.com. The W wise S E or I S E? Uh Wise, like how they portray owls in popular media. Yeah, I was gonna say you got got if it was W Y S E. <laughs> no, I'm not even gonna go to wisevoter.com because that's what they want. And if I go there, it's just going to be that naked dude sitting off the edge of the bed again. <laughs> I, I, it's got to be. There's no way that's a legitimate site because, again, <laughs> what the shit is that? Maybe. That's, that's like uh, Virginia.gov. <laughs> did you say 
Publix bought Safeway or Safeway bought Publix? Publix bought Safeway in 2018. Any oh. leftover Safeways were bought by Publix. Go straight to hell. Straight there. What's Tennessee's? Is it not Piggly Wiggly? Home of Memphis? Uh, Piggly Wiggly. That that used to be South Carolina, I'll tell you that. But uh, I believe most of them are out of business. So the only Piggly Wiggly on here is Wisconsin. Mm. Aldi is Oklahoma. You broke-ass state. Aldi. <laughs> um, Kroger is Tennessee. Kroger is the majority of the South, even though it's, a, I believe, a Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Cincinnati company. Uh, Ohio is Meyer. Yeah, I've heard of Meyer. Um, of course, all of New England is Stop and Shop. Other than Vermont and New Hampshire, also Aldi. Broke ass. Um, <laughs> What's Texas? Just curious. Give me the whole list. Fuck it. Let's end the show. Give me a whole list. I love grocery stores. H E B. It sounds like H P V. Illinois Jewel Osco. Yeah, Jewel Osco. I've been there. Um, Arizona is Fries. <laughs> sounds familiar. Alaska Fred Mayer. No idea. Hawaii Foodland. Well, their tagline is food, family, friends, and aloha. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's <laughs> only a Hawaiian thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Locally sourced. The um, High V has Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, the De- South Dakota, Nebraska, and Kansas. What's North Dakota? Uh, North Dakota, along with the rest of the Big Sky and the Pacific Northwest, in Nevada and New Mexico, are all Albertsons. Hmm. Uh, Sprouts is Colorado, you pretentious ass. You're the opposite of Oklahoma, Vermont, and New Hampshire. Oh, we only do Sprouts. We go to Sprouts so much, it's the most popular one in the state. Fuck off, Colorado. Um, Food Lines, the Carolinas, and Virginia. Acme, whatever the shit that is, is Delaware. New Jersey, New York, or ShopRite. Uh, Trader Joe's is also Maine. I'm going to tell you this. The only thing Maine and California have in common, being Trader in the Joe. polar opposites of the country, they both have a shit ton of bears, and that's it. That's it. What's Nevada's? Because they got a weird one out there called Albert. Sm- oh, Albertsons. Oh, my bad. Have you ever been to Maine? No. The biggest rednecks I've ever met in my life. I have been deep in the Mississippi Delta. I've been in the hills of Arkansas. I have been in God knows where Alabama. I will tell you to this day, the biggest rednecks I've ever met are in Maine. I think North Florida might give them a run for their money, but that that middle Jacksonville, St. Augustine, St. John's River corridor, there's some freaking beings out there. When you get into inland Florida. Yeah. That's you were I when I walked out of the room I heard you start talking X Files. That's that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm fairly certain like aliens do walk among us and they took human form and they all just moved to Lakeland. Yeah. In Ocala. Or, or Winter Haven. <laughs> Inland Florida is so fucking weird because it's people who are like, I like it hot. And you're like, oh, it's hot in Miami or Tampa. They're like, no, I like it even hotter than that without the reprieve of the beach. Like, oh, okay, so you don't want water? No, I want water, but water that makes it hotter and muggier that I can't swim in because of the enormous reptiles. Mosquitoes, reptiles, alligators. (laughs) Have you ever been to Lake City, Florida? Yes, I have. (laughs) That shit is weird. All the the all the uh, the orange trees that line like the entire highways. Yeah, I was I was inside a gas station in Lake City, Florida once. That's something out. not many people should say or ever say. You got out there lucky. <laughs> Columbia County, um, right off I ten, and this one guy was like, he walks in the gas station, and the dude recognizes him because he's the brother of someone that guy knows. They had never met before, but he walks in. He's like, "Hey, are you so and so's brother?" He's like, "I am." How'd you know? He's like, 
Hot and damn, Bobby Lee. How'd you know that one? <laughs> he said that he was related to an ex-girlfriend of the guy's brother and then was like, oh, she started doing porn. And he's like, oh, <laughs> I heard about that. And they were like having this full-ass conversation. The dude was just there to obviously buy dip. And I was like, man, my business with this gas station is done, but I want to stay. Like, it's, I like, uh, it's a little soap opera, a little Lake City soap opera. Lake City Shore. Lake City is a weird ass place, but it you're is. right. Yeah. Central Florida gives Maine rednecks a run for their money. I've Maine. never been to Maine, so I can't say, but the most redneck people I've ever seen is Central Florida, bar none. Yeah. Um, I one of my favorite things that like country ass rednecks do is they take the name of um other cities, usually cities that are greater than uh, the city that they um, take the name of. And they just mispronounce the shit out of it to try and make it different. Like, there's a Houston, Mississippi, spelled like Houston. Yep. Cairo, Georgia, after Cairo, Egypt. There's Albany, Georgia, <laughs> yeah, after well. Albany, New York. That's just... It's just a thing to do. Like, yeah, we're like that city, except there's no buildings here, and we pronounce it dumb. Like, oh, cool. Americas after Americas. <laughs> there's in rural northern Mississippi. Uh, there's a sign that says "Left to Paris and Right to Denmark," and I was like, something tells me I'm not gonna see a lot of clogging over there in Denmark. Like, I can't have too many highbrow art conversations in Paris, Mississippi. It's pronounced Denmark around here. <laughs> And pair ass. The if and if you go to one of those towns and you pronounce it how you think it's supposed to be pronounced and how it's intended to be pronounced, it's like you, you just will get on his grave. You'll get a dude laughing at you, going, "You're not from here, are you?" Like, now I'm guessing if I was from here, you'd know me already because it's a town of 1,100 people. It's just, I that that gets me. I mean. It, I remember the first time I went to um, Lafayette County, Mississippi. It's spelled like Lafayette. And I was just a kid. And I was like, oh, I forget even the context I used it, but said Lafayette County. And so I was like, oh, God. What'd you say? And I was like, Lafayette? He's like, it's Lafayette. I'm like, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> Jackass. Oh, there's some funny people out there, man. Funny people. So let's wrap up the show. Uh, we've been going on a while. Let's let's wrap it up with our final story by sticking in Florida. I asked Doc about this when we were going over the when I sent him the pre-show rundown yesterday, and I asked about it on the pre-show today, and he said he hadn't had a chance to look. And I was going to send it to him, but I said no. I'd rather Doc enjoy this in real time. So in the New York Post, the title is Florida man Kevin Justin Mayorga bites off pet python's head in fight. A Florida man has been arrested for allegedly biting the head off a pet python in the middle of a domestic dispute, police said. Kevin Justin Mayorga, 22. And Doc, if you see this guy's headshot, you remember when that one dude from the Mighty Ducks was apparently doing meth? And oh, like, was, yeah. And the mugshot went around. It looks like that. Nice. Um, as you can imagine, the guy who bit the head off a snake. Probably not normal. No. Uh, is accused of <clears throat> sticking his teeth into the snake after he got into an argument with a woman in a Cutler Bay apartment early Monday. Cutler Bay is uh, essentially a suburb of Miami. Cops encountered the decapitated python after they responded to the domestic incident after 5.30 a.m. The officers reported hearing a man and woman screaming inside the apartment before the female shouted for police to, quote, just kick the door in. Uh, Mayorga subsequently blocked officers from entering and briefly held the woman against her will. He struck a cop in the face with a handcuff when the officer tried to detain him. The police found the snake and its severed head near the front door after he was eventually detained. The woman told officers Mayorga had bitten the pet's head off during their argument. The relationship between Mayorga and the woman was not immediately known. He is facing charges of animal cruelty with intent to kill. I, I think he executed his intent. <laughs> yeah. uh, false imprisonment and resisting arrest. He's being held on a $15,000 bond. What scares me the most is the $15,000 bond. 
This guy bit the head off a live snake to win points in an argument. And what? You can get released on 10% of bond, right? So $1,500 and he's out. Yeah. yeah. I would I like him to go higher. <laughs> Ideally. <laughs> like, if you told me $1,500 is all that stands in the way of this dude who was capable, not only capable, that was a thought in his head where he's like, should I bring up her mother? No. Should I bring up how she goes through my phone while I sleep? No. Should I bring up that thing that we fought about a while back with like her ex-boyfriend? No. Let me bite the fucking head off this lives. He put a python's head in his mouth and then bit down. I mean, I mean yes crazy person but i think we're forgetting the craziest aspect of this is that he bit the head off of her snake she is a snake person which is even more frightening and more terrifying than a man that bites the head off of a snake she needs to be locked up alone for possession of snake three hundred thousand dollar bail bail bond whatever the fuck it is. yeah that's a really good point um i don't like victim blaming but in this case we absolutely should her taste and shit is probably a bit off. Uh, she gets a python. Just, just get a dog. Just get a dog. Get a get lizard. Get like a cool lizard. Like I know even that's like weird and on the other side, but that is like twenty steps down from python. Just a pet Roger Goodell. <clears throat> and a pet Roger Goodell, little bearded, you know, bearded dragon. There's some cool lizards out there. I'm not a lizard guy, but it's way better than a python. But I'm, I'm, I'm with you in that I do not trust her judgment. Because something tells me that there might have been red flags with this guy previously. I don't think like he's an accountant who goes to church on Sundays, never misses a Marlins Day game at the park, and then just one morning bites your living snake's head off. Something, something tells me like, yeah, might have been a precursor to the unhingedness of this dude. No. Yeah, and I have to imagine as well, kind of built onto that, he's threatened this before. He's definitely looked her dead in the eyes of the snake right here, like, I'll bite its fucking head off. You won't. You Justin, won't. I'll you do won't. it. I'll do it. And he doesn't. And then she Justin. finally said, well, you got a tiny penis like your dad. He goes, oh, hell no, lady. <laughs> Bit it off. <laughs> yeah, I'm curious what the last draw was. Yeah, that, that had been something wild that was said. It couldn't have been just like, you know, your run of the mill fight. This was a bat, a last straw that made him so unhinged that he bit the head off a live snake. I, so you think that this is something he's threatened? Like this wasn't a spur of the moment? It has to be. So you think that this was always in his back pocket where he was eyeballing that snake? He's like, I'll bite that damn snake's head off, give him an opportunity. It might have been ingested at first, you know, I'll bite its head off, ha ha ha. And then eventually escalated to where it is you think he's done it before like on um, just like uh, casual snakes in the wilderness mm, i don't know I, I part of me is has to be yes he's done it before you don't just automatically jump to from argument to biting snakes head off but at the same time if he was cracked out on meth never know <clears throat> also how do you think he bit it you think he bit it like a slim jim just right there or did he go pull sideways and bite in half? I, th I think he put the snake's head in his mouth and bit at the neck. That's insane. <laughs> I think Did the python have teeth? They gotta bite your tongue. Think about that snake's last moments. What? What? Don't put, put me down. No! I, I eat you. You don't eat me. I Please. eat you. Hey, Lisa, help! <laughs> Uh, this is this is only something we could joke about because it's something as horrible as a snake. Yeah. Any yeah. other animal, we'd be just this would not be a topic. I'll tell you no, that right no, now. No. Um I I you raised a good point about drugs. I need to know what drugs he was on because if he if he was on the heavier the drugs, the less I would make bail. Uh yeah, yeah. if he was on <laughs> meth or coke or bath salts or whatever, shrooms. I'd be like, ah, I don't know. Bail set at two thousand dollars, <laughs> whatever's in your pocket. <laughs> um, but if he did this stone cold sober, twenty million dollar bond, only alcohol. 
Like, let's go 0.2 BAC. Like, fairly drunk, not quite blacked out. Well, probably uh, blacked out. I'd also, I'd also need to know what he drank. Uh, more so than the BAC. <laughs> that's true. Because if he drank bourbon, I'd be like, uh, okay, I don't really get it, but that's more reasonable. But if this dude drank like six Bartley and James wine coolers and then bit this off, I'd be like, I don't know what kind of dude you are, but you're unhinged. Absolutely not. You, you know that when... I had 16 with- Aperol spritz and bit the head off of a snake. <laughs> He walks into his neighborhood bar. They're like, uh-uh, last time I served you. <laughs> nope, not again. You out. Uh, uh, <laughs> picture on the wall, persona non grata. Uh, if this would be, what what date does she tell this to her next boyfriend at? Like, is this, a, this isn't a first date, a third, is this a third date? Is this like when they're in a relationship? It's like, I feel so good being able to trust you, you know, like you treat me. It's got to be in a relationship because not only does the dude have to worry about the fact that he's in dating a Python woman, but that there is a man out there that was also crazy enough to date a Python woman that bit the head off of a snake. Well, you don't know what he's going to do to you. No. Like you have to have him signed, sealed, delivered. You might as well be at the freaking altar when you tell him. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, let's be honest, they're from Florida. They're not at the altar. But <laughs> they're definitely getting eloped. Do you take this alligator to also be your alligator? Um, I, I love the idea of her telling her friends because, again, with my red flag thing, uh, I, I think that her friends also saw this and were just like, no, don't. Wait, what's, what's the guy's name again? I want to say it was like Jeremy. Uh, I want I want to get this right, uh, Kevin. Like, yeah. oh, I know. We're just, sorry, keep going. Like, do not, do not. You're too good for Kevin, girl. <laughs> Don't do it. And then this happens, and she's like, Christine. <laughs> you're never gonna guess what happened. Like, what? Kevin and I are through. Oh, finally, girl. What happened? Did you? <laughs> Did you catch that dog out at the bar with another girl? It's like, no, he bit Bubble's head off. I'm guessing yeah. she's from South Miami, and she's I'm guessing she's also in her early 20s with his age. Although, again, it's 40, you never know. And she has a python. I'm betting she gave that python, like, a really dumbass name. Uh, what are the overall are the odds she's a stripper? If you saw Kevin, you would know she's not. Unless okay. it's something in the Everglades. Okay. 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 All right. First of all, Kevin, what a name. Kevin and Kyle, I got two good buddies of mine. I'm not going to get into it, but there's are some crazy people with some crazy names. So Snake name Connie. checks out. Um, I, Bubbles is not the name of this snake. We have to come up with a better name for this snake. I, I like the idea of something comical and whimsical like Bubbles, but Bubbles does not fly for this snake. Oh, no. I know exactly what this is. Hit me. This snake is either named Rick or Morty. <laughs> okay. Okay. You know the type. Yeah. 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 That's... uh. No, no, no. no. This snake is named Rick and Morty because she feeds it like... When it's eating, the, the mouse that it drops in there, because she definitely drops live mice because she's a psychopath. It's Morty. Because he's going crazy. But when he's just chilling on her neck or whatever the hell she does with the snake, it's Rick. I, I can almost she dual guarantee- personalities it because she has two personalities. She, without question, has a uh, a red Kia Forte with a bruised-in back bumper that she drives very aggressively. It has a lay around the um, little rear view. And there's at least one profane bumper sticker on it. The, everything checks out there. The only thing I was going to say different was a, uh, what was, oh, shit. I'm Dream losing catcher? the name. No, 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 no. It's a different type of car. Not a Kia Forte. Sky. Something Sky. A Mitsubishi uh, Gallant? No, no. And maybe oh, a Mitsubishi my. Gallant. And, uh, that also would play well. Oh, what is it called? My mom had one. God, I got to. Wait, the Saturn Sky? Yes, Saturn Sky. Yes. 
<laughs> she could not afford a Saturn Sky. No, those things are the cheapest fucking cars ever, dude. Oh, they were no. all plastic. They were like ten thousand dollars back in two thousand ten. Like they are cheap as dirt. Undoubtedly gifted by a grandmother. Yeah, gifted by a grandma, and those things run forever. That's why I learned to start uh, to do stick shift. Was in a Saturn Sky. Yeah, I I'm getting a lot of clarity on her without having literally any information other than this guy who was in her life in some degree in the fact that she had a python and she lives in Cutler Bay. But I have a pretty clear picture of her now. Hell yeah. <laughs> well, thanks as always for listening. Check us out on Instagram at Spaghetti Junction Boys. I had someone DM us uh on twitter yesterday with it just was a link to our instagram and the text was i found you oh no who did you piss off no it's a it's a follower of ours and it's like a real profile like it's not i thought you were were getting into weight shaming people again and they finally found you (laughs) No, it wasn't my Instagram. It was our podcast Instagram. That was uh, uh, your vendettas against weight shaming people are on your personal. Okay, good. Don't put it on the, the mainstream. Smart. I'm not hiding from my weight. <laughs> um, but I, I didn't know what to say back to that because I didn't know what the intent was. And I, I, when I saw that, I was just like, is this menacing? Is this friendly? Or is it just like, hey, look what I found. I, I have no idea. I just said, thumbs up is a good response. Good job. Yeah, it made me do that. But you can check us out. You can find us as well on Instagram at Spaghetti Junction Boys, and you can find our Twitter at SJB Atlanta. Uh, thanks as always for listening. We'll see you next week.